Sometimes you need somebody with razor sharp aim to take out a target that's a mile away. Hi folks, it's Falcon and today on Game Ranks 10 video game snipers we never forgot. Let's start out at number 10 with Garrus Vakarian from Mass Effect and Thane Krios from Mass Effect 2. These guys are easily the two most snipery characters in the Mass Effect series. Garrus is one of the first party members you even get in the original Mass Effect. He is a team member in all three of the main games. Garrus, he starts out as a member of CSEC, basically the space police, and he goes rogue in the second game, and it's fun. He's very um, hot and cold, so to speak. He can be very measured, very smart, very calm, and he can also be insane. Garrus is a ton of fun. He had the sniper rifle's talent in the first game, but his sniperness is a lot more emphasized in the second one, where you find him sniping the bad guys on Omega. Thane is an assassin you recruit in the second game, and he's more proficient with sniper rifles, even though when you talk to him, he says he prefers to kill his targets close range. Thane's personality is more what you think of with a sniper, though. He's kind of cold and detached most of the time. Garrus, on the other hand, like I said, can be very serious-minded, but is generally a lot more friendly. At number 9 is Deadshot from Batman Arkham City. Batman, uh, you know, has a lot of different villains. The most famous sniper is, of course, Deadshot. He actually appears in the opening moments of Arkham City, even though you might not even notice him. That's uh, him in line right there, giving Bruce Wayne the finger guns as you pass by. He's actually in Arkham City to kill certain targets. One of the side quests is to figure out who Deadshot is targeting and put a stop to it actually. How this ends up working out is you find a body and use Batman's detective vision to figure out where the shot came from. The actual confrontation of him plays out like most sniper encounters in Batman games where you need to stick to cover, avoid him, don't let him spot you, and uh, try to sneak up on him. What makes him unique is his ability to ricochet bullets off walls, which can pull some pretty ridiculous, unbelievable stuff, but again, like, super villains are just like that, you know? At number 8 is Sniper Wolf from Metal Gear Solid 1 and The End from Metal Gear Solid 3. Metal Gear is a series just full of snipers, but these are the two most memorable. Sniper Wolf because she sets the template of all future snipers in the series. She's a really fleshed out character, surprisingly so, um, for what amounts to simply a boss enemy. You run into her wolves, you find out Otacon has a crush on her, you fight her in two different sniper duels, there is a lot going on with her, and you hear so much of it. The end also deserves a big mention though, because while he doesn't have a lot of story involved with him, he's one of the most memorable boss fights in the series, and he's characterized really well. He hides in a massive jungle area, and he doesn't fire until he spots you, and after he sees you, he just shoots. He throws some smoke down and runs away, so it's basically a cat and mouse game until you can find him, unless he finds you first. The battle can take forever, like up to an hour if you don't know what you're doing, though famously there are some pretty funny ways that you can skip the fight, like moving this PS2 system clock because he just dies of old age. Or you can also shoot him right after this cutscene ends. Yeah, and that just does it, that takes care of him. At number 7 is Linda058 from Halo. June A266, and of course the Halo 2 Sniper Jackals. Halo is another series with a fair share of snipers. Linda 058 is a character with a ton of backstory in the expanded universe stuff, but her main appearance in the games is during the events of Halo 5, where she's the sniper for Blue Team, the Spartans who are helping Master Chief during the events of the campaign. June A266 was one of the Spartan 3s from Halo Reach and a member of Noble Team, the main group of guys who run around with you during the campaign of that game. Interesting thing about June, one of the few Noble Team members who doesn't die during the events of the game. He actually survives even though your player character doesn't, and went to work on the Spartan 4 program in canon. Of course, we can't talk about snipers in a Halo game without bringing some of the most annoying snipers ever up the Halo 2 Sniper Jackals, especially on Legendary difficulty. These guys would kill you even before you realized anything was there, and they are crazy precise, have near-perfect aim, and single-handedly make Halo 2 one of the hardest games in the entire series to beat on Legendary. 
At number six is Lieutenant Carl Fairburn, also known as the dude from the Sniper Elite series. Yeah, nobody knows what this dude is actually called. He's just a Sniper Elite guy, but he does have a name. Uh, it's less about the character though and more about the fact that the Sniper in this series is just incredibly fun and satisfying. Being a Sniper is great in Sniper Elite. What's so cool is how much simulation goes into it. Bullets are realistically affected by wind and gravity, character stamina. This basically means that lining up perfect shots may actually be difficult and an interesting venture to accomplish. Hitting enemies also is really fun because the game depicts in pretty gruesome detail how the bullet travels through the body of an enemy, a la Mortal Kombat. And yeah, he doesn't have much of a character, but any guy that's sniped Hitler in more than one game deserves a special mention. At number five is Mordecai from Borderlands. Yeah, there are sniper-like characters like Zero, but Mordecai, outside of being a fun character to play as in the original Borderlands, who has a cool bird you can use to harass enemies and also appears in Borderlands 2 and 3 as an NPC, he is a full-on sniper in those games. Like the first time you see him in Borderlands 2, he's up in a sniper's nest blasting enemies with his rifle and actually assists you the entire time you're in the area, which is nice. It's always good to have a sniper taking people out for you while you're doing your thing. Mordecai isn't your traditional sniper character, though. He's more of a laid-back goofball than the serious or focused guy that tends to be the stereotype. Also, in the original Borderlands, he has an entire skill tree dedicated to sniping, creatively called the Sniper Tree. Yes, you can snipe me for uh, sarcastically calling that creative if you must. At number four is Irvine Kinius also known as the worst sniper ever from Final Fantasy VIII. In Final Fantasy VIII, you're given the mission to assassinate the sorceress Idea, and your main guy to do it is Irvine Kinius, the goofy cowboy looking dude. He's the newest member of your party and actually uses a shotgun to fight enemies rather than a sniper rifle. As these things are wont to go, the mission to assassinate the sorceress takes all kinds of crazy turns. Nothing works out right at all, but at least they've got Irvine, the dude handpicked by the leader of the military in the school you picked him up from to do this mission, right? At the moment where he's supposed to shoot her, he gets cold feet and has to be talked into the one thing he's supposed to do, the one thing. He does eventually fire the shot, but it's pointless by then. So basically he just completely failed. Good job, Irvine. Later on, you learn some crazy melodramatic stuff that connects Irvine, Squall, and some other party members to the sorceress. So there's a reason he didn't want to kill her, but still. He had one job, dude. One. At number three is Craig Boone from Fallout New Vegas. Boone is a possible companion and noteworthy for maybe being the absolutely most overpowered companion in the game. He's a retired NCR first recon sharpshooter with an absolute hatred of the Caesar's Legion, and he shows it by just absolutely blowing away any that you see. His hatred for these dudes is so massive that you can't be nice to any of the Caesar's Legion guys at all. He'll just immediately turn on you if you do, which is something you do not want because, again, possibly the most overpowered companion in the game. Outside of having maxed out the gun skill, he also has the spotter perk and can take a lot of punishment going down. He's also a cold-blooded character. It's almost impossible to get him to talk to you about his past and tends to get unique comments from other NPCs about how scary he is. Get into enough fights with him where you're just seeing enemies' heads exploding and you'll understand why people are scared of this dude. He's a beast in combat. On the other hand, if you want to make New Vegas instantly easier, just recruit this dude. That's that. At number two is the Team Fortress 2 sniper. Maybe one of the most memorable snipers of all time can be an absolute monster with the right player controlling him. Team Fortress 2 is all about archetypes, and this is obviously kind of the archetypical sniper. He's got a sniper rifle, duh, a weak submachine gun, and even weaker, Kukri, along with the many, many weapons Valve has added in the years since TF2 came out. It's also something that just really sticks in your head when he goes, sniping's a good job, mate. And finally, at number one, Captain McMillan from Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare. Also, Captain Price. McMillan is the lead man in probably one of the most memorable sniper missions ever, which is a flashback that sees Price and McMillan infiltrating a secret arms deal going on at Pripyat, you know, Chernobyl. The big set piece of this mission is the actual assassination attempt where you have to shoot Zaki from a very long distance. Miss it, he gets away, and you have to carefully watch the wind speed and 
bullet drop is something you got to take into account. It's a really serious sniping mission. Also, it goes sideways regardless of what you do. It leads to a really challenging escape sequence where Price has to carry an injured McMillan to the estate chopper. Like These are the main guys of probably one of the most, if not the most memorable sniping mission in gaming ever. And a couple of quick bonuses for you. Paul Foley from the Conflict series called Eagle Eye Foley. This guy is the medic and the sniper of the team. The giant archer in Dark Souls 3, a super annoying enemy found early in Dark Souls 3. He pelts you with arrows from like a massive distance. He is so far and the arrows are so big that these things hit with the force of a rocket launcher. Lugo from Spec Ops The Line, the sharpshooter of the team, Lugo can be commanded to snipe guys on command and is incredibly handy to have around when you're surrounded. Uh, basically like all the guys in Spec Ops The Line, he starts going down a dark path, but that doesn't mean he's not useful. Next is Speed Booster from No More Heroes, an old lady pushing a shopping cart that also might just have a giant sniper rifle that shoots laser beams. This is one of the most unique battles in No More Heroes, and I mean, just like look at her. She's ridiculous. And finally, Widowmaker from Overwatch. We have to mention the main sniper character from Overwatch, Widowmaker, because she's got poison gas, infrared sight, and a sweet sniper rifle that can fire fully automatic. And that's all we got for you. What do you think? Which is your favorite? Leave us a comment. Let us know. If you like this video, click like. If you're not subscribed, now's a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every day of the week. The best way to see them first is, of course, a subscription. So click subscribe. Don't forget to enable all notifications. And as always, we thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon. You can follow me on Twitter at FalconTheHero. And we'll see you next time right here on GameRanks.